Hours from now, they'll start cutting up the turf at Sun Devil Stadium and selling it as 50,000 souvenirs. That's 60 bucks for a piece of Fiesta Bowl dirt and grass under glass in a wood and brass case, or 25 bucks for grass stuffed into a ceramic helmet planter. As promoter Matt Schembechler, Bo's son, puts it, the dirt has, quote, been trod on, sweat on, bled on. Sell it, Matt. Will the players who did the trotting and sweat uh, sweating and bleeding in tonight's Fiesta Bowl get a piece of the action? No, they'd have to settle for just the glory. Florida and Nebraska. This was supposed to be a close game for Lawrence Phillips and company. First quarter, Florida leading 3-0. It should have ended there because Phillips takes the handoff and races 23 yards. And they're not going to get him. First down. Setting up Tommy Frazier. Back to pass. Phillips, back to receive. Touchdown, 6-3 Huskers, the point after was blocked, and that might affect the spread. Still in the first, Danny Werfel, over the middle, Redell Anthony. And he'll go all the way to the three before they bring him down, and that sets up Werfel, his own self, and just a yard out, gets the ball across the plane, and it's 10-6 Florida. And those of you who thought the Nebraska Cornhuskers could lose look pretty good. Uh-oh. Uh Phillips through the line, avoiding them like other guys in his own conference. Beats the linebacker, he's gone. 42 yards, touchdown, 13-10 us. Still in the second, Gators back at their one. Jamel Williams beats Werfel into submission, 15-10 Huskers. Still in the second quarter, 25-10 Nebraska. Werfel, beautiful pass to Michael Booker, who's a quarterback on the wrong team, and they're not going to get him either. 32-10, 35-10 at halftime. Third quarter, it's all Frazier. You can't accuse a guy of running up the score here. You never know. The quarterback draw right up the gut. 35-yard touchdown, a 32-point game. Then the play of the night or perhaps the year. Well, Florida demoralized and springy out there. Frazier on the option. They stopped him. Ah, uh, no, just three guys. They didn't stop him. Another guy didn't stop him. Now he's all by himself, and unless somebody comes out of the stands and trips him, it's 49-16 Huskers. It's 49-16 Huskers. You want to see that again? Count with us. How many guys had him or almost had him? Two, three. Here comes four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Well, at least eight. Let's put it that way. Some guys had doubles on him. Eight out of 11 players. In fact, we saw it, thought Steve Spurrier was going to come out and try to get him. 75 yards. And you don't think Tom Osborne could have seen that coming? The final 62 to 24. 62 to 24. Werfel was sacked seven times. Huskers outrush Florida, 524 to minus 28. Frazier with 199 yards, 6 of 14 passing. While Jacquez Green was being scooped off the field, they also interviewed Montel Williams. I mean, not even Dr. Quinn, medicine woman. Steve Spurrier, 2-3 and three in bowl games at Florida. Damn. One may be the loneliest number, but it certainly brings you plenty of attention. Just ask the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Chris Fowler and his band of merry men rejoin us for more on the coronation. And Chris... I think Nebraska can run on natural turf. What do you think? <laughs> I don't think the grass field was the overriding factor in the ball game. Safe to say it, Dan. Let's put into perspective what they've done now, guys. Some people did, however. Okay. They are a missed field goal away in the game against Florida State from being 37-0 and the last three seasons. The back-to-back -back consensus national championships. The first time that's been done in 39 years when Oklahoma did it. Just a remarkable feat over three seasons. Well, over three seasons, they have dominated lots of people. Let me tell you about the mental aspect of this team. Before they entered the game, Dr. Jack Stark told me on the bench as the game was ending that the ball club had a videotape presented to them by Christian Peter, a very emotional tape that talked about the love of team, the love of friends, and the work ethic the Nebraska tradition has established. He said that, that Tom Osborne, for the first time ever, said to his ball club, I love you. Go out and play hard. You deserve it as a team for all you've been through. Then at halftime, he told them again, forget what you've done in the first half. You guys go out and get after their fanny. They said it was an unbelievable emotional game that he got his team ready to play, and it showed on the field. Hey, Craig, he could have said, I hate you. I'll never want to see you again. They were going to kill him because they were <laughs> the best team out there. But also I want to point out Charlie McBride, the defensive coordinator from Nebraska. He set up a defensive plan of blitzes coming from one way, faking the other way. He took Florida completely out of his no-back offense. He set the tempo to Nebraska defense. They just kicked them all over the place. They did a tremendous job on defense. Well, we've said it a long, a long time. Charlie McBride, the defensive coordinator, oh. 
is as good as anybody. Two years ago, he devised a scheme that really held Charlie Ward and Florida State in check. They held Miami's an offense in check last year and a total domination of Florida up front. There were some scary matchups coming into the game, Craig, for Florida. Mo Collins, the inexperienced tackle trying to uh, protect against uh, Jared Thomas, and it was a tr problem all night. Well, it was a problem for everybody, though. Yeah. You really can't just put it on the freshman. I mean, there was tons of pressure coming from the inside, coming from the outside. Early in the game, I kept thinking, all right, Florida's going to go one, two, three, and get rid of the football. But it never happened. And because of that, they were getting hit blind side, front side, everywhere. Terrell Farley for almost a safety there. Well, a couple of plays later, it did occur. Mo Collins and these guys, he's a freshman, and it was incredibly loud. I've got to tell you, I've been to a lot of games at Nebraska Stadium. I think it was as loud, if not louder, on the field there. Why am I saying this? Because the Florida offensive lineman never had a chance to get established. All the time that the game was going on in the first half, Nebraska was in high gear, not Florida. It was read and react, react on their haunches because those Florida offensive linemen had no idea when the ball was going to be snapped, and Nebraska's line was getting off of it in a hurry. Notice the numbers of those guys tackling the quarterback, number 28 and 43. Linebackers, that's what hurt them. But my vote was for the Heisman all year long for Tommy Fraser. That's a perfect example why they should not have the vote of the Heisman until after the Bowls. Tommy Fraser is the best all-around football player in America, period. And if you don't think so, watch this run. Everybody, everybody except Chris, Craig, and I had a shot at him, and he goes all the way for the touchdown. Before this ball game, Tommy Fraser had 307 of his 601 yards after the first hit. He had three-fourths of his rushing yardage tonight came after he got hit. He's a running back playing quarterback. He had the greatest performance I've seen in a long time, Craig. You know, you talk about his future. Is it in the NFL? Oh. If it is, he may have a future as a running back. I don't think it's as a quarterback, but the guy showed tonight that he can play and he will play. That run you just show, one of the more memorable plays oh, I think, yeah. in bowl history. I don't know if there's been a more dominant individual performance than a bowl in a while. Has anybody ever been most valuable player in three consecutive wow. New Year's Day bowls, two of them national championship victories? A lot more still to come in our post Fiesta Bowl report from Tempe. This bowl. And that is the Sears Trophy, a $40,000 Waterford Crystal football. It's been in Lincoln. It's going to stay in Lincoln. The Huskers win back-to-back -back national championships. Lee Corso and Craig James rejoin me. Guys, we talked about Florida's aggressive offense against Nebraska's aggressive defense. It's a strategy the Gators don't often face in the Southeastern Conference. Corners that come up, challenge the receivers, try to bump them. Linebackers that blitz a lot and try to get in Danny Werfel's face. It is a gambling situation. The Florida receivers told us all week, if they miss on the jam, look out. It's six. That didn't happen tonight. Well, Chris, the reason why they didn't get past them in the jam is the fact that Nebraska's blitz package forced Nebraska to play defensive backs man-to-man, -man, and he did a tremendous job. Here's a perfect example of number 20, Michael Brooker, playing man-for-man. -man. Now, you put the pressure on Whirlpool here. He throws off his back foot, and Brooker comes from nowhere, makes a good catch, and goes all the way. Craig, we talked about it in the game. The way to stop him is like LSU did. Bang him up front, make him throw the ball, off balance, and they work today. Of course, if you're Steve Spurrier, he's going to watch game film, and he's going to see this, and he's going to say, what if we'd have had time to throw the football, and what if that bump and run had been really challenged out there? But I tell you what, regardless of what happens in a football game with the air, you've got to be able to run the ball. In a championship game, now we have really seen etch it in this brain right here. If you can run the football, if you can play great defense, you have a chance. Nebraska played great defense defense in the Fiesta Bowl. Unbelievable. They can hold a team down that was averaging 173 yards to minus 28, minus 1.3 rushing. That'll make a running game coordinator puke the next day when he gets up and reads the newspaper. You have no shot at all playing against a team as good as the black shirts are when you have no running game, period. And it's a total team effort, the way they plug holes. Terrell Farley, the Big 8 newcomer of the year, comes in, plays a great game. You talked about Michael Booker. He, we thought coming into the game, was the more vulnerable of the two corners. Tyrell Williams being the more experienced guy, would they be able to pick on Booker? He said, no, not me. He stepped up. He played the great game. So a total team effort on defense. And offensively, once again, total domination by that Nebraska offensive line. They didn't have to wait until the fourth <laughs> quarter to wear them down. They were doing it in the first quarter. Well, and you know what, though? Mike, in defense of Michael Booker, I mean, and all other defensive backs in America, they're sitting at home watching this game. They're thinking, hey, we could all play defensive back for Nebraska tonight. <laughs> when you have people in the quarterback's face, it doesn't take four seconds to cover them. It's one, one thousand. 
one and a half seconds. And the guy's covered up, he's gotten rid of it, and he's in trouble. Let's take what Florida learned, okay? As a football coach, if I was coaching Florida, I learned one thing very much important at first part. I gotta get more physical. I gotta get my guys in the weight room and quit getting on the beach and starting banging some weights and get stronger <laughs> because they got banged up front. And also, I better develop a running attack because if I'm one dimensional against Nebraska, they'll beat me the same score in the Sugar Bowl next year. Well, but you know what's interesting? Nebraska learned from Florida teams about speed. speed. They went and recruited speed. That's sure right. enough, Nebraska now, everybody's gonna learn from. Talked a lot about Michael Booker, the young cornerback. He's standing by now with Steve Cyphers. Steve? You finally, I mean, first series, Dorian catches the ball down the field, and then something happens. What do you do to shut them down? Well, we keep, first we keep focused. You know, everybody's going to have their catches. The great players have their catches. We, we have a game plan. You know, we work with our game plan, and we took care of business. That's all, you know, that's all we had to do was take care of business. What was that game plan? The game plan was basically to take away the deep routes. You know, we know Dorian was going to be the main guy, and he was going to be the person that they was going to go to in the crunch time. So that's what we did. We just focused on him and the rest. He's not the whole team. We focused on everybody, and we practiced hard. What did that offense have to say to you after this game was over? What did Florida think of your defense? Well, you know, they ain't had no choice but to think of my defense as, a, you know, as me as a, good, as a good back. So, you know, I want to give all the praise to God, and I want to say hi to my mom and everybody back home. Now I'm bringing this national, champ national championship back home and MVP of the game, baby. How and the defense the MVP of the game. How does this feel? This national title. It feels better good. Last year? Nah, this year right here is a lot better. A lot better. All right, thank you, Michael. All right, All right Steve. Thanks a lot. Hey, listen. It's two in a row. It's 36-1. That's right. They lose Tommy Frazier. They have a quarterback named Scott Frost, but you're right. With the people they have up front, you never rule out Nebraska for a three-peat. No. They can always run, and they will play defense. We'll and watch a lot watch Colorado, that. though. Yeah. There's a lot of teams to watch. We'll talk about He's next year down. later on. Coming up, a complete <laughs> breakdown of the Fiesta Bowl. Not Colorado. the complete breakdown that Florida had. As says we continue from Tempe and from SportsCenter. It's the Huskers, 62-24. You saw it. Let's continue to analyze it. Chris Fowler leading our delegation at the Fiesta Bowl. Chris? All right, Keith, thank you very much. Nebraska players all week long have gone about their business with a methodical, workmanlike attitude that's almost scary, a single-minded. As Florida players tried to be a little looser and relaxed. In the media day, they were doing something called the choo-choo train, an invention of their special teams. Well, finally, after the game, with Nebraska players cutting loose and admitting they enjoy this kind of thing, and... It looks like a little bit of mocking. <laughs> they, they even do the choo-choo better than Florida, man. You're right. They outflanked him even in the dancing department. <laughs> Afterward, Florida coach Steve Spurrier coming off a tremendous regular season, 12-0, a third consecutive SEC championship. A puzzled Spurrier talked about how his team was virtually devastated in every area. Uh, we did not come to the ballpark to play the best we could, and that's, I'm embarrassed about that. As coaches, we did a lousy job somehow or another. Uh, but uh, we were outmatched. There. It's not often you oh, see Spurrier yeah, yeah. looking that puzzled and that humble, but I'll tell you, I don't think it's about preparation and out coaching and, and the fact that, that Florida hadn't been here before. It was just a physical mismatch, Greg. Early in the game, though, it was not a physical mismatch all the way. Florida went out, Chris Doring, and you could see him on those little slant patterns. Hang in there with me, and I'll tell you what I'm talking about, and I'll show you. Chris Doring went out early, and he had a chance. There was just... the inch right in front of everybody. Doring was getting the little slants. They were completing the passes. But you know what happened? Nebraska made the adjustment, and he didn't do that anymore. Then Nebraska comes out, has an excellent play call in the backside screen pass for the touchdown, and let me tell you what that did. Two things. For Florida, that said to them on defense, we have no idea what they're going to do offensively. We're really screwed up in the mind right now. And for Nebraska's defense, they realized they could stick with the number one receiver for Florida. Lawrence Phillips, really an unbelievable player. Craig, we travel the country. We've seen Autry. We've seen Dunn. We've seen McElroy. Lawrence Phillips is the best running back I've seen in person this year. What would you think? Well, I think he's the best running back. I, I cannot believe the amount of uh, strides of improvement he's had this year because now I consider him a number one pick in the NFL draft. He ran tonight with authority, vision, and a big... We looked at him one time on the sidelines. The guy's got a big old hump on him, too. He, <laughs> he can run with power. Hump means the back end right there. All right, now, we did not see Eddie George. He's a great running back, but let's show you what Lawrence Phillips did against the Florida Gators. Notice right here, he's got good quickness, and boom, he's strong. He ran out. Now, watch this little quick right here, and then, boom, 
to the outside. You know what? They told me he watched you demonstrate that run on the grass in the pregame show, and that's what he did. Let me tell you what Nebraska did. They rolled up their sleeve, and they said to Florida, come on. We're going to test you man to man and see who's a better man. Nebraska were better men up front, and that's why they won the ball game. Yes. They really, besides the early touchdown pass to Phillips, almost disdained the forward pass and just went with the run in the power game. You're right about Phillips. Even his teammates said he was doing things in practice yeah. before this bowl game that he didn't do before his suspension. It makes you wonder, what if? What if you've been able to control his temper? Would the Huskers have had the Heisman Trophy winner at tailback? Yes. They had the runner-up as it was at quarterback. Now, of course, the offensive line, as we've said a lot, is really the system at Nebraska. Aaron Graham, the only returning starter from last year, the anchor of that line. After the ball game, he spoke with Steve Cyphers. What was the difference between this year and last year? Oh, tonight, this game between these two teams. I think uh, the team who prepared the hardest won the game. I really do. I think uh, we came out and showed everybody that uh, we were the best team in college football. We prepared hard for this game. Uh, we didn't take a, a long break after we, after the Oklahoma game, and uh, we just wanted to come in and, and prove to everybody that we were the best team in college football this year. How satisfying was it given the year to win the national championship, all that you went through? Absolutely, probably more satisfying than last year just for the fact that, uh, you know, we had a lot of people who who maybe lost a little faith in us or maybe were looking back, looking down on the program. And we, we wanted to come out and show people that, uh, you know, we're not a bunch of uh, bad guys. We're a, we're a bunch of college students and who uh, like playing college football. Aaron, can you finally appreciate your place in history? 36 wins in three years. No team has ever done that. Can you appreciate that? I think it's starting to sink in finally. Uh, you know, I think we, we we can say that we went three years uh, and basically there wasn't anybody in college football who could play with us. And, uh, you know, re disregarding the, the Florida State game, and, you know, we, we probably should have won that one too. So it's been a fun, fun, fun career here. Terrific. Thanks, Aaron. It's nice to hear a Nebraska yep. player appreciate it. You watch their bench as this whipping is unfolding and they're still stoic you wanted to see them smile and embrace each other what they've done is amazing over the past three years and we'll come back and have some final thoughts from tempe after this then back to dan patrick okay, at a point in the game after nebraska had that safety the, the drive backwards floor will be showed interesting thing they came out they had two backup offensive linemen they had a backup backfield and on a third and seven play they show this they show five wide receivers and Tommy Frazier wins a quarterback draw for a huge first ad. It, it symbolizes a lot of things, Nebraska's depth and their innovations offensively. I want to show you one thing also about Tom Osborne. Maybe it was not noticed, the classy act he did. Florida had the ball, I mean, Nebraska had the ball in the Florida about four-yard line, had one play to go. What did he do? He took a knee. He did not run the score up. He could have got 70. Class runs throughout their program, no doubt about that. You know, another thing you'd like to look at and analyzing this ball game was the crowd early in the game I cannot tell you how loud it was down there I know for a fact that that had an impact on Florida's offense very very important that the crowd was here and I don't know that Spurrier prepared his team enough for that that they were playing a road game well, I think they were caught off guard by a lot of things Danny Werfel so brilliant throughout the season the best passing efficiency in NCAA history the third place guy in the Heisman Trophy he was hounded he was sacked seven times he was confused, but it's not that guy's fault, certainly. Lee. No question about it. Hey, here you go. Hold this thing for Let me hold it up. This is a you. stress releaser. <laughs> I don't know why I ever picked against Nebraska. How about you, partner? Give me that. Get out of here. Nebraska are national Woo! champions for a second consecutive year. The Big Eight has four 10-win teams. Oh, no conference has ever done it. The final headgear of the season. No, so long no. from Jeff Bay. Back to the studio. You guys? I <laughs> Sports Center continues from Tempe, Arizona, where the best two teams in the country went helmet to helmet on Tuesday night, and it was no contest. Nebraska flattening Florida for a second consecutive national championship. The Sears Trophy will stay in Lincoln for one more year at least. Lee Corso and Craig James join me, as does Tommy Frazier, the offensive MVP. Don't know if anybody's ever been an MVP in three consecutive New Year's Day bowl games, two of them for the national championship. Well done. Let's talk first about that 75-yard touchdown run. That's going to be remembered for a long time, and it symbolized what you guys are about, the determination, the strength. <laughs> Describe what's going on right here. Right here, is, we're running the option, and there I just duck it up. Guy grabs me. Right there, I feel him in the um, crowd. And as you see, they're trying to take the ball away, and I just 
try my best to keep the ball and keep my legs going. Next thing you know, I'm out the other end, 75 yards later, I'm in the end zone. Everybody in the stadium thinks you're down. You just get the legs turning? Yeah, that's one thing. Um, Coach Osborne and Coach Soldier really stressed for the quarterbacks that if you're going to run the ball, then you have to run aggressive and physically. And that's one thing that I worked on my whole career. Tommy, you were born and raised in Bradenton, Florida. Now you won two out of three national championships against Florida teams. Any special feelings? Oh, yeah, there's special feelings. You know, I wanted to be having a clean sweep, but Florida State got me, but I'm happy with <laughs> Florida and Miami beating those two guys. Yeah, you talk about emotions. I understand that, that Christian Peter had a video or some kind of pregame speech and tape that inspired you guys. What was it, and what was it about? Well, it wasn't necessarily Christian. It was pretty much all the captains on there. They really stressed that they wanted to go out winners. And our captains have seen they really wanted to go out winners, so they put it out. They put a challenge out to us. Who who wanted to get on the on, ride their backs? Was was it the first time that Tom Osborne said he loved you loved you all as a team? No, it wasn't the first time. That's something that he's always stressed from from day one that he loved his team and all he wants is for us to go out and give our best. Tommy, it was a total physical domination, but you guys also had some wrinkles. I want to show a play where you had five wide receivers on a big third and seven. Momentum was really going your way, and you were on the quarterback draw. Describe this one. Well, just something that we worked on. We saw other teams do it, so we put this formation in. We just ran the quarterback draw, and it helped us out. Tommy, now that you're finished with your career at Nebraska, any thoughts that you have about professional football and what you'd like to do position-wise, leagues or what? Anything on that? Well, I haven't really thought about that. You know, I'm, I was still a college college football player. Now that season over, I have more time to think about it, and I'm just going to sit back and evaluate everything, and whatever happens, happens. Well, you know, you, you're trying to work on him as an agent, too. You've got Steve for what he does. You got everybody sure. else. Hey, but, but talk about professionally. I mean, there's some folks now, after watching you run like you did tonight, and throughout your career, but especially tonight, that might consider you a pro prospect at running back. Well, you know, that's something that I'm not worried about right now. If that's what they want to consider me, then... If good things happen by them, consider me that, and I, I'm going to be happy with it. But, you know, I'm just going to sit back and weigh all my options. That's something I want to do, then I'm going to take it. If not, then I'm going to move on. Talk about the team. It was a trying year for a lot of people, a lot of negative publicity. Talk about how you guys drew together and, and overcame this, and do you feel like this is a little bit of redemption to end the season this way? Yes, yeah, it's, a, it's a big redemption. You know, everyone was putting down our program. Mel, um, Bastion Coach Osborne saying that he runs a, a terrible program, but... I think this game right here really showed, and this year really showed how much this team is really unified and how much we really play together. Um, everyone's team feel, feel like we're our brothers in, in, in God's way, and we just can't, went out there and played the best that we can game in and game out. Tommy came in second in the Heisman. Any kind of a feeling tonight, you know? I mean, come on now. George kind of stumbles, and you go crazy. Any feeling now about the Heisman? No, there's no feeling. Um, the Heisman was done before this game, and whatever happened after that, then it happened. I just went out there and tried the best I can to play, play good football and help my team win. You know, we've talked all week here about Nebraska tradition. What is Nebraska tradition? Aggressive, powerful football. You saw that tonight. I'm, you're going to continue seeing that from years from now. Tommy, congratulations. MVP once again. you got to have another ring to go with that one you got in your right hand there. Yeah. A tremendous career, and best of luck down the road. Thank you. Tommy Frazier of the Champion Cornhuskers. That's it from Tempe for now. Back to Sports Center.